Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and over the past 15 weeks, I've been focusing on producing Swift and Swift UI content on topics that I had a working knowledge of, but had always had the feeling that there was something that I was missing or not completely understanding. Now, unless I'm mistaken, I think that many developers are in the same boat. You see topics like ones that I'm going to be showing you here, and you think, well, it's not worth my watching the video because I know that stuff. I use it every day. However, I think you might be surprised because when I started preparing for this and creating a series of videos, I was of the same thought. And I found out I wasn't as smart as I thought I was. There's a lot more under the covers than you might think or realize. Now, starting in August of 2023, I'm going to be releasing new content based on topics and APIs introduced at WWDC 23. But a lot of those newer APIs can't be used in your current projects as it requires iOS 17, watchOS 10, or macOS 14. So for that reason, I really want to bring this series of videos to your attention as none of the content here requires the latest OSs. Now I consider each of these topics to be core for both understanding how Swift works and how to lay out your views properly in Swift UI. So let me just briefly go through each of these videos. Now I'll leave a link in the description below for each of the videos but you can always find them all in the playlist link provided as well. Now the introduction doesn't list the videos in the order that they are released, but rather organized in a more logical order. So I think that's the way to go here. So in this first video here, I take a closer look at what an initializer is for structs and classes and how you can have multiple initializers. I'll step you through the convenience and custom initializers for Swift and Swift UI views. Now you often hear people talk about making your code more Swifty. And what exactly does that mean? I suppose it means different things to different people, but really what it means is to write idiomatic Swift, and by this I mean to write code that looks and feels like Swift, including Swift-specific language constructs and conveniences, and to avoid commons that might be more common in other programming languages. A big pattern of this is the trailing closure syntax that's used in this video. So I'll dig into what it means and help you understand how to make your code more Swifty. In this video, we'll learn how to extend the capabilities of a type, like a string, an int, double, or an array, by adding new methods, properties, and subscripts. Here, you'll learn about the power of tuples, and I provide you with some practical examples that you might consider using in your own or future projects. Swift key paths kind of always scared me, as I thought that they were really complicated to understand and use. Hopefully, in this video, I can shed some light on them and you will, as I came to realize, realize that they are not scary at all. We even jump into learning how to apply the dynamic member lookup attribute. So what can I show you about Swift subscripts that you don't already know? You use them when accessing elements in an array. What else is there to know? Well, let me show you how you can create your own custom subscripts to make your code safer and more generic. In this video, I'll explore the use of in-out parameters and how you can use them to your own advantage to streamline your code. We'll also learn about mutating functions and where and how you can use them. And while we're talking about function parameters, do you really understand what a variadic parameter is and how you can use them? Well, let me enlighten you here. It seems that every release of Swift gives another way to format date strings. In this video, I try to step you through the myriad of choices you have and teach you which ones make the best sense for your project. Similar to date string formatting, each Swift version gives us more options for styling text views in Swift UI. Learn about Markdown and various ways of using string interpolation to format your strings. This was another one of those scary topics that I avoided for a long time. Let me help you get over that fear and gain a clear grasp of Swift UI preference keys and the immense value they bring to your development workflow. Did you know that Geometry Reader is just another container view in Swift UI? Once you understand that and know the benefits and limitations, you can take advantage of the proxy value that it provides to lay out its child views to meet your own design needs. Keynote has that wonderful magic move transition. In this video, learn all about namespaces and the match geometry effect to create the same stunning transitions in your own projects. Understanding view safe areas and insets will go a long way in helping you understand how to better lay out your views in Swift UI. You might learn something new here as I did when I was researching this topic. The final topic in this series is Swift UI alignment guides. 
Learn how you can adjust the positioning of your container subviews without using a spacer or geometry reader. It's amazing how much control these guides provide. Well, I hope you've learned something new in these videos. If you have, I encourage you to leave a comment, tap that like button, and subscribe to my channel. Make sure that you ring that bell to get notified of new videos that will be released. Thanks for watching.